Hi everyone! First of all, I'd like to thank all the followers and subscribers. It means really a lot to me and it um, makes me feel like, you know, I'm doing something good and um, yeah, it, it's, it's a joy to see more people um, subscribe to your channel and, you know, I'm here to share what I have learned and I have learned a lot through YouTube so I just want to pass on my knowledge and it's also everyone takes a different journey in learning things um, some people copy at first and they develop their own style some people just look at different styles get inspired and then create their own thing and I have met a lot of really interesting people through YouTube and I'm really grateful for this platform that we have that we are able to connect so yeah and today I was going to take a day off from doing art and dedicate a bit of time to respond to your comments because every comment means a lot to me and I love reading um, your comments and I try to get back and respond to m most comments that I physically can and I tend to sort of take some time every week or once every two weeks depending how busy I am and you know um, respond to to your comments and so today was going to be the day but um, it's lovely light outside still at this hour where it usually starts to go darker and so I thought I will just have a play in my journal and do something really that I love doing um, when I just want to kind of relax and be creative and just let my creati creativity flow. This is a new journal, this is the Jane Davenport canvas journal and I love um, the paper in this because it's um, double sided so it has different um, like a more textured on one side and slightly smoother on the other and I um, have done a few pages here so these are all of these three pages um, I have used the James Lukba creative stamps which I purchased on Etsy I will leave the um, Etsy shop below and they are great fun I haven't used these ones yet but um, I went for the face base and the unbothered set stamping set and um, here I have created some balloons with this face right here and this stamp is this body and then the um, this kind of warrior girl is this stamp so um, basically, if you see some paint here in the background, it's a little secret. I can't share that with you just yet, just because I'm preparing a gift um, a gift guide for watercolorists, and I will um, talk about this very exciting watercolor I have discovered in that video. Okay, so I'm going to. Um, play with these. I don't even know exactly what I want to achieve. I think I might try the unbothered set today. Let's see. Um, which one should I go for? I like this one. Okay, so I found my stamping block. That's much better. So I'm going to leave it at that. And in terms of cleaning the stamps, I basically keep them seasoned. <laughs> and I just use a tissue paper just to stamp off the excess ink. And that is sufficient enough because next time I'm going to stamp, there is already a layer of ink and it should. Uh, not give me the issue that I had with the first one, the very first stamping. So, I'm going to take my um, platinum carbon ink 
fountain pen in extra fine and I'm going to go in and kind of personalize the um, face a little bit more. So a very gentle mono brow because it's going to be our Frida. And in terms of the hair, I think I will go in and create some roses. I think I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to give her a chalker, as I love in all of my illustrations. like so, kind of modernizing Frida slightly and I'll try to make her eyes a bit bigger like so. She's now starting to look Asian. Okay, I think I will leave it at that. And in terms of the dress, first of all, I'm going to continue the arm like so. What I love about his stems is this sense of modern kind of. Um, feel to it. He is going to be releasing new stamps, stamp set, which I am so excited about because these are fabulous and these were his first and always with the first ones you kind of learn and then you get even better with the next one. So I can't wait to see what he comes up with. So here she is, basically her, her body is facing um, to the left and then she turns her head to the right, so quite sassy. And um, all I need to do now is quite literally just go in with a watercolour and I'm done, which is so great. I'm going to start with roses and for that matter I'm going to go with the brilliant... Um, I've got my swatch card here, Brilliant Purple. I tend to um, put the swatch card slightly away from me just because it um, you can quickly create mess with the splatters of the watercolour, so that's why I learned a lesson not to do that. So I'm going to go into the water, uh, into the roses, and I gave it a few minutes, as you saw, to dry. The ink to dry because if you go instantly in you're likely to pull the ink so it just needs a little bit of time to dry and set and if you don't have that time um, you have like a hair dryer or a heat gun then I highly advise you use that to set your ink before going in with the watercolor so now I'm going with the transparent yellow, which creates a beautiful orangey colour. I'm going to use the Perline Green, which is lovely. And I don't want too much of it. So it's just giving her a little bit of makeup but not overpowering and I'm not covering the entire lid, I want some white areas there. And then with the black I think I'm just going to create some shadows. Now I can concentrate on the um, on the dress and 
thinking I'm going to go for something crazy and I'm going to go for the cobble turquoise. Now her house in Mexico is called Casa Azul and the, the blue the blue house and there was it was painted this turquoise oh no I made a mistake and now her arm is turning blue. Um so I'm going to quickly try and rescue this situation. Actually, I quite like it now that it's blending in with the grace and that. Yeah, I like that a lot actually. Okay, I'm going to leave it. So, the house was called Casa Azul because it was painted blue and I think, you know, that um, she had a lot of art of that colour. And so it's kind of fitting. So obviously she's turning her hat to the light source and that's why it's the lightest but at the same time we've got this shadow and I think I need to put a little bit more of the shadow just here like so. So it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, I think I am quite happy with how she looks so I'm going to take my, uh, what are these, fine tack handmade gold watercolors and I'm going to go in with this um, Arabic gold so I'm just going to drop a droplet of water and just sit it a little bit just to soften it it actually works, activates the watercolor really quickly so you don't need to wait for too long Okay, so here's my Frida done, and that is quite literally it. I could do some writing on the side, or I could just leave it as she is, and I think she looks gorgeous. Really, really cool kind of um, look. And one thing that I want to do, however, is actually go into black watercolor, and I want to just go over this hair just to make it really black because Frida had this very kind of thick dark hair and I want to emphasize that and then a little bit more just here on these curls and I like quite the um, the wispy look of them so I'm not going to cover everything James left some areas um, to suggest just a few hairs, um, like a hair fly away, so I'm going to leave that and I think I might go over this black here and let's see, and this line I think as well would look quite nice if I just darken it up. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so I have um, used the um, heat gun and dried it and I wanted to show you how beautiful this gold watercolor comes out once it dries. So when you're dropping it into the wet watercolor and, and sort of make it flow, it's, um, it mixes in with the uh, watercolor and you can't see it uh, too well. However, once you're drying it, it starts to um, come to the surface almost and then looks really, really beautiful. Um, yeah, so I hope you can see. I'm just going to move. There you go. So you can see it in the hair, in the roses, right there. Very pretty. And then in her dress as well. Kind of gives it that sort of marbly look. And I absolutely love the way it looks with this turquoisey colour. So, yeah, that's... That is her. I really love how she looks. And I went from here to here in no time. And if you're not great at arms drawing arms, hands, then you can see how easy it is uh, to <laughs> imitate a hand without sort of needing to really go into details and you can 
do um, you can bend your arm this way you can I bent my arm this well though it's a little bit unnatural but I kind of like that look with the fashion illustrations and then to suggest the beginning of the wrist I just widened it slightly at the bottom here and that is all you need to do I absolutely love these stamps James if you're watching I'm super excited to uh, see your next stamps come out okay guys thanks for watching see you soon